One time, somebody who uh, used to attend our church reached out to me after years and years of having no communication. Nagupin up siya sa akin at ang sabi niya, nahihirapan siya spiritually and basically, bumibigay na lang siya sa mga temptations at hindi na siya lumalaban sa kasalanan. Sabi niya sa akin, he felt so distant that even prayer ay parang napakahirap sa kanya. He wanted to get back with God, kaya lang di niya alam kung papano. If you're in a similar situation and you want to get back on track, you have come to the right place. That's why you should stick around because that's coming up here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer. And I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find their way back to God. And that's what this channel is all about. Previously, we talked about seven signs of a backsliding Christian. In this video, we are going to conclude our two-part mini-series and we're gonna discuss how to overcome backsliding. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Pursuing the Savior. Let's get started. Gusto ko pong linawin na ang backsliding ay isang pansamantalang period sa buhay ng isang totoong kristyano na kung saan ay pinipili niyang suwain ang Diyos, kaya siya hindi lumalago sa kanyang buhay kristyano. But the whole idea of backsliding is actually found only in the Old Testament and oftentimes, ang tinutukoy dito ay yung actions ng Israel toward God. Basically, it is used in two ways in the Old Testament. Number one, when ungodly people openly reject God. And number two, when God-fearing people do not grow in their spiritual lives and they kind of hibernate because of sin. Obviously, yung unang gamit does not apply to Christians, kaya yung pangalawang gamit lang ang applicable sa mga Christiano. Therefore, kung ikaw ay isang totoong Kristiyano na may banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos pero somehow ikaw ay parang hindi lumalago sa iyong buhay Kristiyano at nahihirapan kang mapanagumpayan ng mga temptasyon at kasalanan and you wanna get back in the Christian race, I encourage you to please keep watching till the end of this video. I'd like to clear out, there is no such thing as a secret formula to uh, overcoming backsliding. What I'm about to give you are only suggestions. Nevertheless, in this season of your spiritual life na kung saan ay uhaw na uhaw ka sa presensya at gabay ng Diyos, you will need all the help you can get, right? In this video, ay bibigyan ko po kayo ng apat na suggestions kung paano po i-address ang backsliding. Number one, confess your sin. To recognize our spiritual dullness and our lack of growth is the first step to healing. Admission of guilt takes humility, and that's exactly what catches God's attention. Bilang isang Kristiyano ay suma sa iyo ang banal na espiritu na siyang nagko-convict sa iyo sa kasalanan. Therefore, malalaman mo kung meron o walang problema sa iyong puso. But if you admit that you are sinning, you have an audience in God. Let's go to Psalm chapter 32 verse 5 and see what the Bible has to say. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. In this psalm, David confesses his sins of adultery, murder, and deception. Naunawaan ni David na siya ay nagkamali at hindi lang siya basta nagkasala sa kanyang sarili, kay Bathsheba, kundi ultimately sa Diyos siya nagkasala. Now David used three words to describe his sin. Number one, the word sin, which means to miss the mark. Ibig sabihin, sinukat tayo, pero kulang, ayaw dun sa pamantayan ng Diyos. Number two, iniquity. It means twisted. I-describe e nito kung ano yung nangyayari sa loob ng puso ng isang taong nagkakasala. Number three, transgression. Which means crossing over the line and deliberately rebelling against God. So, si David, he admitted that he sinned he had iniquity and transgressed against God. Wala siyang tinira 
wala siyang tinago. Nilabas niya lahat sa Diyos. Before David committed these sins, alam niya na na mali ang mga bagay na yon. However, he allowed his sinful nature to take over. At naunawaan din ni David na yung enjoyment na daladala ng kasalanan, ay pansamantala lamang at hindi magtatagal. Dahil doon, nawala yung kanyang fellowship sa Diyos, nawala yung kanyang kapayapaan. Because of this, David examined his heart and he realized he indeed had sinned. If you want to get back into the Christian race, ang unang-una mong gagawin ay aminin mo na nagkasala ka. And when you do, God is gracious enough to give you a second chance. Here's a biblical promise for you to hold on to. 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we confess our sins to the Lord, dalawang bagay agad ang nangyayari. Number one, pinatatawad tayo ng Panginoon. Ibig sabihin, binubura niya yung listahan natin ng mga pagkakasala. At pangalawa, cleansing. Nililinis niya tayo mula dun sa mga after effects ng ating pagkakasala. For example, shame and guilt. But you have to understand that after admitting your guilt, you also have to forgive yourself and to receive the forgiveness that comes from the Lord. Meron po kasi mga Kristiyano na humihingi ng tawad sa Diyos, humihingi ng tawad sa iba, pero hindi po nila magawa ng patawad ang kanilang mga sarili. Don't be too hard on yourself. But let me give you a word of caution though. Hindi porket gracious na pagpatawad ng ating Panginoon, ay gagawin na nating lisensya yon para patuloy na magkasala. Number two, remember God's goodness. You became a part of God's family on the basis of God's mercy. Not because you deserved it, not because of your own merit. It's because of God's innate goodness that He extended His hand to you reached out to you and offered you forgiveness of your sins and eternal life. Ang Diyos ay pinipresent ng Bible bilang isang mapagmahal na ama at bilang isang mapagmahal na ama. Ipinakita niya ng lubusan ng demonstrasyon ng kanyang pag-ibig sa pamamagitan ni Kristo. Tignan natin ang Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Si Kristo ay namatay. In our place, tayo dapat yung magbabayad ng sarili nating mga kasalanan because that's what Ezekiel says. But Jesus willfully and sacrificially died on the cross para siya yung magbayad sa ating mga kasalanan because our blood is not qualified to become the payment for our sins. Dahil tainted yan ng kasalanan. The benefits of Christ's sacrificial work on the cross of Calvary took effect in your life when you repented of your sins and when you put your trust in the Lord Jesus. Dahil doon, pinatawad ka ng Panginoon sa lahat ng mga kasalanan, binigyan ka ng buhay na walang hanggan, at binigyan niya ng saysay ang buhay mo. Now, you have to understand that you do not deserve any of these things. What you deserve, what I deserve, is the full measure of God's wrath. But instead of that, He gave us His righteousness, His forgiveness, and eternal life. Now, God gave all of these things to you because He is good. And you have to remember that. Ang tanong ko ay ito, paano mo ngayon ibabalik ang kakandahang loob ng Panginoon sa iyo? When you are tempted to sin, remember that those sins, kung ano man yung mga kasalanan, kung ano man yung weaknesses mo, remember that those sins are the very reasons why Jesus died on the cross in the first place. He took your punishment. He died on your behalf. And the least you can do is to obey Him and remember His goodness. Number three, find the right community. Alam ng Diyos, mahirap i-overcome ang backsliding ng mag-isa. When we're alone, we are weak and helpless. That's why we need company. Kailangan mo ng isang community, hindi lang para tulungan ka na magmature sa iyong buhay kristyano, but also for you to move on from a life of sin. Alalahanin natin na yung community of believers, yung tinatawag nating church, ay hindi lang isang lugar kung saan tayo ay a-attend para mag-fulfill ng mga spiritual duties o kaya mag-impress ng tao o impressin natin ang Diyos. O kaya para linisin natin yung ating mga konsensya or para magbawas ng kasalanan. Hindi yon ang purpose ng church. The church is a place where you will be taken care of spiritually 
enabling you to resist temptations through a community of believers. Besides, moving on is much easier kapag tayo ay may mga kaibigan na tunay na nagmamahal sa atin na handang sumuporta at tulungan tayong mag-move on. Tignan natin ang Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 and 2. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. A true church genuinely cares for every believer. Regardless kung okay lang sila o sila ay medyo nagiging wayward sa kanilang Christian life. Ang isang iglesia ay binubuo ng iba't ibang klase ng tao. Iba't ibang mga personalidad. Iba't ibang level ng pananampalataya. Iba't ibang mga experiences. But one thing's for sure. There should be at least one person in the church who can relate to you on a personal level at handang tulungan ka na makabangon mula sa pagkakasala. Now, your job is to find that one person. ipag mo na dalhin ka ni Lord sa isang tao na willing na tulungan ka, handang makinig sa'yo at gabayan ka sa iyong pagbangon. It can be your pastor, it can be your small group leader, or it can be any mature Christian na pwede magbigay sa'yo ng biblical insights. Preferably yung mga naka-overcome ng mga bagay na sinusubukan mong malampasan sa bahaging ito ng iyong buhay. But you have to be humble enough and open for rebuke and correction. Lahat tayo ay kailangan natin ng isang taong yun na nagmamalasakit sa atin na handang i-rebuke tayo. It takes a lot of guts and courage na mag-rebuke ng isang tao at gagawin mo lang yun kung talagang mahal mo siya. So if you can find someone who is willing to confront you and rebuke you so that you may be corrected, naku, baka mamahalin mo ang taong yan kasi totoo kang minamahal niya. Number four, remain vigilant. So let's say, nakapag-confess ka na sa Diyos, tinanggap po na kanyang kapatawaran, you remember God's goodness, and now you have the right community. Hindi ibig sabihin nun, tapos na laban. You also have to be on the defensive. You gotta keep your guard up. Especially kapag smooth sailing ang buhay. You should know how the enemy works. You should determine his strategies and game plans. And you should not let him score kasi baka matalo ka sa laban. To remain vigilant ay kailangan bantayan mo kapatid ang iyong puso. Let's consider Proverbs 4 verse 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Kung papanong tayo ay naguhugas ng kamay palagi, nagpe-physical distancing, nagsusuot ng mask, nagsusuot ng face shield pag tayo lumalabas para maiwasan na magkaroon ng COVID-19, in the same way ay meron ding mga pamamaraan para maiwasan naman natin na tayo ay magbabad sa pagkakasala at mag-backslide muli. Paano yon? By being watchful of our hearts. The Bible tells us to avoid sins, things like sexual immorality, pride, anger, bitterness, slander, and so on. Therefore, you can't afford to put your guard down. Ibig sabihin, you should not miss prayer. You should not forget to study your Bible. Hindi ka dapat nagsiskip ng church services and fellowship dahil lahat ng ito ay essential para sa iyong pagguardya ng iyong puso. If you miss once, you can miss twice. Three times, four times. And before you know it, eto na naman tayo, balik na naman sa backsliding. Therefore, you should be careful about the things that you allow to enter your heart. Tingnan natin yung Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. In conclusion, overcoming backsliding is hard. But it's not impossible. And you cannot do it alone. You need God. You need the church. You need the Holy Spirit. But let me remind you of this. As long as you are sincere, if your repentance is coming from the heart, and if you trust in God, you will succeed. At natin na sinasabi ni Paul, you are 
an overcomer. Do not let your present define who you are. You can do better. God will help you. Let Him help you. I'm hoping na naging pagpapala po sa inyo ang video ito at uh, nagkaroon po ng maayos na conclusion yung ating naudang video. Thank you so much po sa lahat ng mga nanood ng unang video natin and I'm hoping na maging pagpapala din po itong video na ito. If you want more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow our official Facebook page. And with that, my friend, I'll see you on the next one.